So the observer is an exercise <coughs> which is, um, and I like to do, I like to do, the thing I like to do with an observer is to get a clarity on, <coughs> on what is an object, yeah. So an object is something that's limited. This is an object, this is a mug. And the thing to do with a mug is, if you look at a mug, uh, you, you see that it is a limited object. So, <coughs> if people want to, they can nod or no. But when you see a mug, it's a limited object. And also, the thing with a mug is it's meaningless. It has uh, one of the early lessons of the Course of Miracles is to make everything equally meaningless. So it's a meaningless mug. And it, does anyone, when you look at a mug, believe they're the mug? No. Okay. So, but that's the great thing with the mug because the observer of a mug, uh, the detached observer of a mug, can clearly has this. I'd say what there's there's space between the observer and the mug. And there is absolute clarity that the mug is not oneself. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, can the observer be a limited object which is observed in front of it? And the answer with the mug is no. Because the uh, mug is observed. Okay, so that's the thing. And if you can do it with a mug or a lamp or a camera or a book and see, like, the observer, there's detached observing of the book. Okay, so the next thing is to uh, <clears throat> look at thoughts, okay? Now, thinking is one of the biggest addictions, I would say, that create <clears throat> separation, the experience of a, a limited self. Two, two things I think The Course in Miracles talks about, you know, one, one of the lessons in The Course in Miracles, I'm not a body, I'm free, for I am as God created me. <clears throat> and the other one is all my thoughts are meaningless. <clears throat> if all, well, and this is some exercise in the course about like a conveyor belt, like watching a conveyor belt go past. So thoughts, they flip past, you know, but, the, so they're like little objects. And there used to be like a, I think this used to be a, be a show with a conveyor belt and you could watch things on the conveyor belt and you used to try and remember, but thoughts are a bit like little objects passing by on a conveyor belt. But what observes thoughts passing by? Is the, and is the observer of thoughts a thought? So, now the thing with a thought is it's an old, they're little things that pass by, they, they have form. But that which observe, observes the thoughts passing by, as they flip by, like the sky is blue, the grass is green, if these thoughts flip by, the observer, that which observes thoughts, is it a thought? And if it was a thought, what's observing that? So this is the first thing to see, is there a detached observer of thoughts? Or am I a thought? But if you're a thought, a thought is discrete, so what's observing that? Okay, so with that, you should start to get the experience of, the, uh, of a detached space, witnessing, opening up, that observes thoughts. The next one is, um, is there anything in the body? I mean, is there any sensations in the body? Like, is there like tightness in the stomach? Is there, um, is there any aches or pains or anything? Well, if there are, then those are like objects. Like, if there's a tightness in the stomach, that's like a ball. Or if there's a pain in the knee, well, that's also an object. It's discrete. So, but what, obs what is observing that object? Is the observer of any, any sensations in the body the sensation? And, if you, and as you keep doing this, you recognize, is the object you or is there observing of the object? And then the thing is, is the, then are, are you the observer or are you the object? And when there's clarity, you realize that the observer cannot be the object. The observer observes whatever tightness there is in the body but is not the tightness. So that detached space opens up. Once you've done that with any tightness or any sensations or pains in the body, then um, comes um, the body. So I, I really like, yeah, and I did this for many, many years, being the observer of the body. And so I, I usually am not aware of the body any longer uh, because I did, I did the observer on the body for so many years, uh, repeatedly. 
So the body is like, if you have a sense of your body, you can, you've got a sense like, oh, these are my shoulders, these are my feet, this is where my body's located. But what observes, because if there's a shape of the body, if there's a sense of the awareness of the body, or the shape of the body, or the limits of the body, then there has to be that which is observing the body, or, the, or witnessing the body. So get a sense, of the, so the body is actually like an object. But, and, and, the, and the body has limits, or it's so big and it's so tall, and there's a sense of the awareness of that shape of the body. But what is observing, and what's witnessing the body? Okay. And then when, you, when there is witnessing of the body, then it's realized that the body is just an object that is being observed. And so you, you now have this detached space, and you realize that the body is just not another object in the room that is being observed, just like thoughts are being observed passing by, just as like there's a mug on the table that, that's there. And if feelings arise or, or go in the body, those are also being observed, but the feelings are not you. The tightness in the stomach is not you, the pain is not you. When there's detached observing, because the next thing is like, uh, is, you know, and this would happen with the body, is, is there a sense of location? And these are all aspects of what's called the limited self. You know, or the, the limited self is that which creates the sense of separation. You know, if there's thinking, then it, it's sensed as if the thinking belongs to the limited me. These are my thoughts, uh, and that is me, and this is my identity. But what observes that? Uh, so, and so, and then that dissolves the idea of, limit, of uh, thoughts being you. If you go to the observer of the body, then the observer of the body is not the body. And therefore, the body. So all of these things tie one to a sense of a limited self. There's a limited self, the experience of a limited self, which has limited personal thoughts, a limited self, which has a personal body, a limited self, which has personal aches and pains in the body, um, and a limited self, which is located. Because if there's a sense of location, if there's any sense of location, oh, I'm located in this part of the room. But okay, so there's a sense of location, but a sense of location is an object, you know. So what observes being located here? Be the observer or the witnesser of this sense of location. The thing, so in the position of watching location, does that have any location? <clears throat> so these are all what I call collapsing uh, the illusion of, of being a limited self. <clears throat> And they're collapsing, they're collapsing the illusion of duality, which is there's a me in this location, in this body, with this story of thinking, uh, in this room, relating to other bodies which are thinking. So it collapses that, and one gets an experience of that which is not limited or personal in nature. Something which is infinite. Also, other things to, to be aware, like a a part of the limited consciousness is often a sense of time. You know, especially in the Western society, there is, it's almost like something in the ego is aware of time passing, like second, that's five seconds, that's ten seconds. There's a sense of time, but what observes a sense of time? The what about the witnesser of time? Be the witnesser, or the detached witnesser which has no interest in time. So in the witnessing of time, or the sense of time, does time exist? So, now as you get to this uh, sense of observing, detached observing, uh, hopefully there's detached observing of the body, detached observing of location, detached observing of thoughts. But now that one is in this space, shall we say, is there any sense of contraction, limitation or separation still existing? now that one is the detached observer of all of these things. And if there is, what's observing that? You see, if there's, a sense of, if there's a sense of being still limited after observing all of these, you know, time, thoughts, body, aches and pains, if, there, if, this, obs if this observing is still limited, then sense the limitation of this observing, and then what's observing this limited observer? So are there any qualities of separation, limitation, or contraction, or duality in this place? Other things to observe, is not particularly today, but is, is uh, noise. 
what observes noise? Is there a detached observer of noise? Is there an observer which has no interest in noise? And does noise exist in that in the detached observer of noise? <clears throat> what you'll notice is when there is complete uh, complete observation, it it disappears. It disappears from experience because there is no longer any identification. And this is. Um, this is a, the nature of consciousness, is that what is not meaningful is not registered. And what is not registered does not exist. Um, and if something is identified with or recognized or it has some symbolic meaning, then, um, then, it's, then it's trapped, it's experienced. And if something has extreme identification, or uh, then one becomes the thing that one is. So one can be identified habitually with thoughts and body, uh, which are the classically in the course one goes. So be the observer, forget that, and just be the observer of what whenever is. And we're going to have like five minutes of silence now just to go deeper into this uh, observation.